we were having our priestly recollection in our community sa so St. Paul. No? And uh, it so happens na katatapos lang po nung aming general chapter. Ang general chapter po, ito yung uh, pag elect namin ng isang bagong superior general sa Roma. At napwersa kami mag-eleksyon kasi namatay po yung aming superior general unexpectedly last Christmas. No? Siguro hindi na kinaya yung problema namin mga pare. So, hindi uh, niya matake. No? So, anyway, we have a new superior general. And so, part of the recollection was trying to study together what were the plans made in that general chapter in Rome. No? But in the course, syempre, yung paring kasama po namin na nagbigay ng monthly recollection made also his own reflections. No? At sabi nga niya, alam nyo, kung titignan daw natin ang tradisyon ng Biblia, may dalawang paghuhugas. At yung dalawang paghuhugas na yun, parehong gagawin natin, sasariwain natin sa Holy Week. Sa Holy Thursday, sasariwain natin yung paghuhugas ng mga paa na ginawa ni Jesus sa kanyang mga alagad kasama si Judas. Yung ikalawang paghuhugas, we will recall as we have the story of the passion on Good Friday, ang paghuhugas ng kamay na ginawa naman ni Pontius Pilate. And then this priest was telling us, you know, dalawang paghuhugas, dalawang attitude. Yung unang paghuhugas, paghuhugas ng paa na ginawa ni Jesus, ay attitude ng involvement. I want to be involved with you. Kaya yun ang sabi niya kay Peter, di ba? Peter, wag na wag na hindi kuhugasan ng paa mo kahit na pinagkatago-tago mo yan. Totoo ho yun, alam nyo? Ang isa sa mga pinagkatago-tago natin ay yung ating mga paa. No? No? Kasi maraming mga sikreto ang paa. <laughs> no? No? But the Lord wanted to wash the feet of Peter. He says, unless I wash your feet, then you will have no part in me. The other washing, the washing of the hands, was an attitude of indifference. I will have no part in the blood of this man. You can take him yourself and crucify him. Huh? I just gave a retreat. I made that exercise. Nagpalagay ako ng dalawang batya sa loob ng retreat room. Sabi ko doon sa mga nagre-retreat ng mga tao, total ka ako, tanghaling tapat. Ang hirap magbigay ng talk kapag tanghaling tapat, baka antoking kayo ako. Isa-isa muna kayong pumunta dito sa harap at maghugas. No? Kanya-kanyang hugas. No? Hugas ng mata, hugas na. No? Iba, kulang nalang maligo. Eh. No? No? Hugas ng kamay. Pero wala akong nakitang naghugas ng paa. Tapos nung nagre-reflection na ako, sabi na, Father, ang daya mo, sana sinabi mo muna para alam namin kung anong gagawin. Hindi, sabi ko, gusto ko si makita kung ano yung natural sa tao. Di ba? Ang natural sa atin ay paghuhugas ng kamay. An attitude that portrays indifference. God was never indifferent. Now, moving further, sabi po ni Pope Francis, because we are imitating the love of God, itong dapat na maging standard po natin, yung pagmamahal ng Diyos. Itong nais natin sundan, yung pagmamahal ng Diyos that is 
never indifferent kung hindi may puang ang bawat isa. Walang marginalized. Walang isna-isang tabi. Ang problema ng may hirap na isina-isang tabi. The Holy Father says, probably it's good for us to reflect on three biblical verses. Sabi niya, ang pabaon niya po sa buong simbahan para sa Lent at sa Holy Week na ito, ang kanyang pabaon ay tatlong Bible verses. Ah. Alam ko sa atin, sa charismatic renewal, we are really reading the Bible. No? That's one legacy of the renewal sa atin. No? Para sa akin din, ho, no? one of the things I'm thankful of is that after a year within my ordination, after a year I was into the renewal, accidentally. No? But in that way, I think the Lord molded me into a ministry that is so attached and close to the Word of God. So, tatlong Bible verses. Una kanya, ang unang Bible verse ay pabaon niya sa buong simbahan. The Holy Father addresses the whole church. And sabi niya, for the universal church, the Bible verse that he would like us to consider for prayer and meditation is 1 Corinthians 12, 26. And yung 1 Corinthians 12, 26, ito po ay siyempre galing sa sulat ni Pablo sa mga mayayamang Kristiyano. No? Corinth was a rich church. No? Sa bagay, until now, people who live in Corinthians are rich. <laughs> Kaya nga tinawag na Corinthians yan. Eh, no? uh -oh. Wala pa akong narinig na developer na nagtayo ng village sa tinawag niyang Tondo Village. Pula, pulagi mga magagandang mga pangalan. No? Uh -oh. Mga Ponticello, mga, you know, mga Italiani, no? mga Mediterranean. No? So, Corinth. Corinth was a rich community Precisely because it was at the southern tip, or it is at the southern tip of Greece. No? At uh, what is in Corinth? Dalawang pier. No? Eh, nung araw, alam nyo, kung saan may pier, doon dumadaan lahat. Tao, kargamento, ah, uh, ideas, everyone and goes in and out with the pier. So, Corinth was rich. And because they were rich, if you read the letter to the Corinthians, isa po sa mga naging complain ni St. Paul ay yung mga Kristiyano sa Corinth were also divided. Dalawa ang Eucharist. Depende sa income tax. Iba yung Eucharist ng bracket na ito. Iba yung Eucharist naman ng bracket na ito. Iba yung fellowship ng bracket na to. No? Yes, during those times, yun ang magkadikit yun. After the Eucharist, the Lamesa, the Agape. Diba? And when you read the letter of Paul to the Corinthians, one of the things that Paul did not like was that there were two Agapes. No? Those who are rich go on eating much, while those who are poor also go on eating less no? in their agape. Yeah, ano reminder ni Paul? In 1 Corinthians 12, 26, Pope Francis quotes the word. Sabi niya, If one member suffers, all suffer together. If we would like to imitate the love of the Lord that is a love for all, without indifference, then, sabi niya, for the whole church, dapat isipin natin, we are not an organization. We are a body. A body with different parts, with different members. But where one member suffers, then all suffer together. In our own experience of our bodies, that I think is very obvious, di po ba? No? 
bodies natin. Huwag mo sasabihin, ay, ano lang ito, ipin lang. Uy, huwag mo lalang langin yung ipin. Pag yan ang kumerot, tignan ko kung paano ka matutulog. Hindi mo lang kung anong posisyon ng tulog mo. Kahit nangipin lang yan. If one member suffers, all suffer together. And the Holy Father says, if we begin to meditate and think of this reality of the church, then probably that will make us think we have to be really caring for each other. Especially for those members of the church who are less, who are least. No? For those members of the church who are poorest, who are weakest. We would care for them as we care for everyone else. No? That is the meaning of the Eucharist. Ipuba. Every time we come and celebrate the Eucharist, and you line up here, and the priest gives to you the body of Christ, that is what he says, the body of Christ. And our answer is, Amen. Amen. At ang reality pala nun eh, hindi lang tayo umaamin doon sa tinapay na naging katawan ni Kristo, kung hindi umaamin tayo sa katotohanan na sapagkat ako nakikinabang sa katawan ni Kristo at ikaw makikinabang din, tayong lahat, therefore, ay iisang katawan. We are one body. Pope Francis even says, well, let us remember that when we come to church, we always profess our faith as a church and we say, I believe in the communion of the saints. Comunio Sanctorum. The communion of the saints. And he says, what does that mean? That we all share the grace of God. The grace of God flows not only from God to me, but it can flow from God to me through you. We share the grace. The grace of God circulates among us. Oh, tignan niyo yung katabi niyo. Oh, sabi po ni Pope Francis, yung katabi niyo, saint. With the letter S. Uh, saint with the letter S. Oh, someday, we hope that will be a saint with a big S. Diba? But even with a small letter S, we are a communion. We share the grace of one another. We share the merits of one another. No? No? Panahon ng graduation ngayon. No? Pag graduation, alam nyo, ang kinukongratulate yung magulang. Uy, Congratulations! Yung anak mo pala, graduate na. Tuwan-tuwa yung mga magulang, oo, minus one na sa budget. <laughs> Pero bakit kinakongratulate yung magulang? Oo, oh, kasi, you know, the success of the child became a success precisely because there was a communion of blessings. Di ba? Yung blessings ng tatay, yung sweldo ng tatay, yung sweldo ng nanay, lahat ng nakukuha nila, doon, pumupunta. No? The communion of blessings. Diba? And the Pope says, that must be our attitude as church. If one member suffers, all suffer. No? Kaya nga itong lately, nag-trending na naman sa Facebook ang ginawa ni Francis. Biro nyo? Ginawang exclusive tour ang Sistine Chapel para sa mga homeless. Eh pag pumupunta kami na Roma, may kasama akong mga pilgrims, ang haba kaya ng pila bago ka makapasok sa Sistine Chapel. May entrance pipa. 
So as part of his Holy Week celebration, the Holy Father allowed 150 homeless people to enter the Sistine Chapel for free. What? pag groupy groupy pa sila. No? Samantala kung pumapasok sa Sistine Chapel yung mga pilgrims, sabi ng mga Swiss God, shh, shh. Bawal. Bawal mag-camera. Baka mag-fade yung gold. Kasi pag yung gold daw tinatamaan ng ilaw, nag-fade. No? O kaya siguro medyo madilim itong... <laughs> Alam ko, itong Guadalupe Chapel nung araw, medyo dim lights, eh, no? Sabi ko, may mga gold kaya sa altar niyan. No? No? So, pero yung pala yun, ano? Uh, anything that is golden, whether it's plated or what, kapag na-expose sa light, nababawasan yung kinang, ano? O bawal. Pero doon ba, groupy-groupy sila, no? no? And the Holy Father even came for them, no? In a special way, no? But that was his way of telling people, you know, the Vatican is not only for the rich pilgrims. It's for you. This is your home. This is your home. I would not be surprised if one time the Holy Father will have a general audience only for homeless. That's how he would like to illustrate the words that he is saying. No? They are all members of this one body. Now, the second Bible verse na binibigay po ni Pope Francis para po pabaon, kanya, para sa ating Lent and Holy Week prayers in, lieu of, in view of this theme about the love of God, a love that is inclusive, not exclusive, oh, inclusive even of the poor, Sabi niya, the second Bible verse is for communities and parishes. So, kita niya, naalala niya kayo dito sa Guadalupe. No? For communities. No? Ano ang kanyang pabaon na verse? Genesis 4 verse 9. If you open your Bibles and read Genesis chapter 4 verse 9, you would see that you are presented with a very interesting and intriguing story. It's the story of Cain and Abel. Kaya ah, tignan niyo yung katabi niyo. Cain ba yan? O Abel ba yan? Ah, ah, ah. Genesis 4 is about Cain and Abel. The Holy Father says, this is his pabaon verse for communities and for parishes. In Genesis 4 verse 9, God addressed Cain after the incident of killing his brother. Ano sabi niya? Where is your brother? Where is your brother? If we are to practice the love of God on the cross, a love that is interested with all, and do that as a spirituality for communities, the Holy Father says, we should exercise being keepers. Keepers of one another. It's not enough to say, Uy, kapatid, marami tayo ngayon. May quorum. Sige na, prayer meeting na tayo. Do we also ask, sinong wala? Sinong wala? Namalay ko, matanda na yung father. Alam naman yan time. Pero yun ang tanong ni Lord, sinong wala? And this is very consistent even with Jesus. Diba? Sabi ni Jesus, the good shepherd leaves the 99 and looks for the one. God has a very poor mathematics. He does not go by the average. He goes by the minority. He looks for the one that is lost. Huh? 
At itong tanong ni Holy Father, sabi niya, Do our ecclesial structures enable us to experience being part? Huh? Sabi niya, yun ang kumisa nagiging problema sa communities. Lala ko lumalaki na yung community. Dami ng structure. No? Kaya kumisan, sa sobrang laki ng community, nag-away-away na. Ah, kung ikaw ay hindi nag-satisfy ng 75% attendance, you are inactive. You cannot be part of the core. You cannot be part of, part of the selection for ministry head. You lack 75%. Ilan ang kulang ko? Isang prayer meeting, sister. Oh? Where is your brother? A community must be a community where everyone is a keeper of one another. Yeah. Oh? To look for the one that is lost. Mag-isa lang naman yun eh. Remember that story of the woman looking for a silver coin? Eh, magtataka ka eh kasi isang silver coin lang naman yun nawawala. Diba? Katapos ko, ng kahangalan ng babae ito, nung makita niya yung silver coin, nagpa-party. May mas mahal pa yung party kaysa yung nahanap niya silver coin. No? But you know, the, the explanation there of many ex, ex, uh, exegetes, sabi nila, actually that silver coin is part of a heirloom. Heirloom. No? Yung heirloom, kapag nabawasan ng isa, bawas na yon, mas mababa ang value. No? The whole heirloom depreciates because of one. And that's the point there of the Lord. Where is your brother? But you know, the most important thing that Pope Francis writes at this point of his Lenten message is that sabi niya, we should be able to reflect on the story in Luke 16, 19 to 31. Uh, ano po yung kwento ng Luke 16, 19 to 31? 16. 15 ang prodigal son. Luke 16, 19 to 31, is the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. At uh, ang sabi po ni Pope Francis dito, it can happen that in a community, we take refuge in a universal love, but we fail to see the Lazarus sitting before our closed door. Ganda no, no? Sabi niya, we can be lost in universal love and we fail to see the Lazarus at the closed door. This particular parable tells us the rich man was not condemned because he was rich. No. He was not condemned because he was corrupt. No. The Lord did not make any comment about the riches or kung paano naging mayaman, itong mayamang ito. Ang kinomentaryohan ng, ng, ng Panginoon po doon ay yung pagwawalang bahala niya with that Lazarus at the door. At ang ganda po ng image 3. Sabi niya, buti pa yung aso eh. At alam niyo, nung araw, kapag tinawag ka hong aso, hindi ho maganda yun. Marami sa atin dito, pet lovers. No? Di ba? <laughs> yung iba nga, mas love nila yung pets nila than anybody else. No? Buti pa yung chichu dinadamitan. Binibila ng pagkain, special food. No? No? 
mas mahal pa nga ang gupit ng chichu kaysa gupit ko. <laughs> Di ba? Oh, oh. So, we are all pet lovers. Pero nung araw, alam niyo po, pag tinawag kang aso, naku, ang sama nun. Kasi sa mga Israelites, the dog was considered an unclean animal. Nobody takes care of dogs among them. It was considered unclean. No? Kasi kung tinignan mo yung paa, kalat. Oh, para sa kanila, ang isang clean animal, yung paa niya, buo. Tulad ng kambing. Kahit may anghit, clean yun. Tulad ng lamb. No? So anything with a solid hoof was considered clean. No? The dog has not a solid hoof. No? So it was unclean. Pero ang sabi ni Lord, buti pa yung dog. Alam ang gagawin. Kahit na unclean, kung ano yung kaya nilang gawin do sa tao, ginawa nila. E ang kaya lang nila ay dilaan. Dilaan at least yung mga sugat do tao. That's what the dogs did. But at least, ginawa nila yung kaya nila. The rich man failed. He failed. Because he failed to see this person at the door. So, we are then asked to go beyond. Sabi ni Pope Francis, go beyond the boundaries. Isa sa mga favorite expression niya. No? Look for your brother. Go beyond the boundaries. No? Like what Jesus did on the cross. He went beyond the boundaries. No? Imagine telling the Lord, this, te- this thief, no? today, you will be with me. Kaling niya. No? No? Wala nang wala nang make up, make up. No? Diretso. Today, you will be with me. No? The Lord went beyond the boundaries. Many times, Jesus was doing that. Going beyond the boundaries. No? That's what He did with Zacchaeus, di ba? No? Sa dami-dami ng mga tao, siningle out niya si Zacchaeus. Sabi niya, ikaw, ikaw. No? Kursunada ko yatang kumain sa bahay mo ngayong araw na ito. No? Now, if you look at it, Pope Francis also does that. That's the beauty about Pope Francis. He doesn't simply write about it. He does it. He illustrates it. Di ba? So, bababa, kung ano makita, no? hahalikan. No? For him, it's a manifestation na everybody is important. This is a brother. This is a brother. Go beyond the boundaries. And here, the Holy Father invites communities, that is us, to do two things. Sabi niya, papaano natin dahan-dahang simulan itong spirituality of a brother's keeper, which is really a spirituality for the love of the poor, for people who are in the periphery. A spirituality that Jesus himself had on the cross. The Holy Father says, there are two possible ways to begin sa mga communities po. Una, tanya, pray with the prayer of the church. Pray with the prayer of the church. I pray naman, Father. Do I pray with the prayer of the church? What do you mean by prayer of the church? When you come to Mass, you have a general intercession. And you see that the, the church prays for everyone. We are not in agreement with Pinoy, but let's pray for Pinoy and all these government officials, whether we like it or not. Let's pray for them. We are not in agreement with these people, no? these Muslims who are doing certain things in Mindanao, but let's pray for them. 
The prayer of the church is a prayer that goes beyond the boundaries. Sabi niya, community should begin to do that. Huwag lang tayo. Tayo-tayo. Kami-kami. No? Ang hirap pa dyan, pag nag-prayer ako, ako lang muna. Lord, unahin mo naman ako. No? Nanay ko, tatay ko, kapatid ko, no? No? lahat ng malapit sa akin. No? Napaka-mayopic no? yung prayer. The prayer of the church is a universal prayer. A prayer that goes to other people's needs. No? And the Pope says, that is one way to begin. Begin with the prayer. Kasi alam niyo po, when you pray this way, what is in prayer becomes also one's way of life. May kasabihan sa Latin, Lex orandi, Lex credendi. The law of prayer is the law of believing. What I pray is what I believe. So if I pray this way, that shows what's inside my heart and my mind. That's how I believe. Huh? And dito, binigyan niya example yung kanya favorite saint. Would you know who is the favorite saint of Pope Francis? <laughs> Sabi ko na nga, <laughs> instantaneous answer. But the, you know, the devotion to the sleeping Saint Joseph we attribute to his talk with the families at the Mall of Asia. No? But you know, the favorite saint of Pope Francis is the one he reads about every day. Saint Therese. Saint Therese. He was asked once, what is in, what is in his leather bag? No? Palagay ko, pag naging santo to, yun ang magiging picture niya. The Pope with the leather bag. Huh? And he was quick to answer, a razor, yung kanyang breviary, at sabi niya, a book to read. Usually, kanya, it's a book of St. Therese or a book about St. Therese. Therese of Lisieux. Huh? Therese of the little flower who lived only a short life of 24 years. Huh? Imagine. Yung buhay mo, doble na ng buhay niya. No? Kakahiya siya, kinuha niya yung 20. Yung buhay mo kaya, kung sakasakali, double the work. No? No? 24. No? So anyway, what makes St. Therese very close to the heart of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, is this, you know? Therese had simple ways. Kaya nga tawag sa kanya, little flower. Simple lang sa kanya eh, no? Pag dinipay niya, what is adoration? Oh, ano sagot ni St. Therese? Sabi niya, adoration is sleeping in the Lord. Ayun oh, naman ginagawa niyo pag nag-a-adoration ko. <laughs> Pamedi-meditate pa kayo, tutulog lang naman kayo. No? Sang oras na tulugan. No? Katapos yan, na-recharge ako. No? St. Therese was doing that. Sabi niya, she's sleeping in the Lord. No? So, anyway, According to Pope Francis, St. Therese is exactly the example of a brother's keeper, even in her prayers. And here, in the letter of Pope Francis, he quotes letter number 254 of St. Therese. Alam mga letter ni St. Therese, naka-number po yun. Sabi niya, sa letter 254 ni St. Therese, written in July 14, 1987, ito ang kanyang sinulat. Sabi niya, I trust fully that I shall not remain idle in heaven. My desire is to continue to work for the church and for souls. Kaya nga meron tayong quotation na alagay doon, I will spend my heaven doing good things on earth. Yon. Para sabi ni St. Therese, kahit nasa langit na ako, I will still care for you. I will still pray for you. 
That's what she did in life. No? Even when she was doing laundry work, she was praying for missionaries everywhere. Missionaries in Africa, in faraway places. Kaya nga kahit hindi siya lumabas ng kumbento, she is the patron saint of mission. And she did it with her prayers. No? A brother's keeper. And that's what the Pope says. Sabi niya, start with a prayer. In the communities, start with the prayers. How you pray. Go beyond the boundaries. No? Yeah. But secondly, kanya, sa mga communities, in order to be able to practice being a brother's keeper, the spirituality of brother's keeper, sabi niya, start also with the missionary spirit of work. Sabi niya, Whatever you can do, no matter how small, no matter what little thing you can do for the poor and those who are far away, you do it. It does not matter whether it's a small thing for people who are poor, who are far away, you do it. And you're spreading the love the inclusive love of the Lord. You are not being indifferent. Alam niyo po, nung binabasa ko ito, one practical resolution that hit me is this. I can no longer ignore people selling something in the bus. Pag nagko-commute ako, many times from Makati, Manila, to Tagaytay, for a retreat, pag upo mo sa bus, daming umaakyat. No? Kanya-kanyang diskarte. Meron yung isa, may dalang plastic bag, hindi magsasalita. Magbibigay ng malilit na papel. No? I am a student, I am the brother of a student, please help us send our brother to school please buy makapuno dried mango are you familiar with that? have you ever encountered that? dati bina pero you know after re reading this thing of Pope Francis one of the things I could no longer do is ignore them I'll buy one or two I'll buy one or two, or even more if I have money. Okay lang. Ano ba naman yung 50? Ano ba naman yung 20? Pero para sa taong ito, malaki na yan. At least pag akit niya ng bus, hindi siya na zero. What? The Pope says, you don't have to be a brother's keeper doing big things. Small missionary acts. Small missionary acts. And if you come to think of it, that was really what Mother Teresa was doing. Mother Teresa did not have the pretensions of ministering to all the sick and the dying. No. Yung nga sabi sa kanya, Ano ba yung ginagawa mo? Paisa-isa. Bakit hindi mo nalang kalapin lahat yung mga yan, magtayo ka ng malaking ospital, kumuha ka ng funding, be systematic. Mother Teresa says, no, that's not my point. My point is, if today, I can let this old Muslim die a good Muslim, giving this Muslim the dignity of a Muslim death, I'll do that. That's enough for me today. I have touched one person. The Lord does not ask what is impossible. The kingdom of God begins with a mustard seed. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Pag ganito ang sindikato din, you make a discernment. Madi-discern mo naman kapag ang tao, 
ay honestly working or not. One good friend of mine who died years ago is uh, Mother Angela, FMM. She died at the age of 90. One of the pioneers of the renewal in the Philippines, Sister Angelina Lim, FMM. She was staying at Stella Maris. She conducts prayer meetings for women. One of the pillars of the charismatic renewal. One time I was riding with her in a taxi. And uh, she hits because we were coming from a meeting and she was going home and I was along the way. Sabi ko, sige, drop na lang kita, sister. Sama ka na. Eh, pareho naman kami Ilocano. So, nag kami sa daan, no? sa taxi. Tagatago din yata si Mother Angel, Angelina Lingon. Anyway, you know, huminto yung taxi, may kumato. Di, tahimik ako. Iya ako yung madre yung bumuno. Mas marami akong pera doon sa madre, pero yung madre yung bumuno. Binuksan ang kanyang maliit na pitaka, dinudot yung 50 na nando doon, binigay. 50 pesos. Tapos tinignan ko siya. Sabi ko, Sister, ah, laki naman ang binigay mo. Sabi niya sa akin, Father, meron akong 50, binigay ko. Kung saan niya gagamitin yun, problema na niya. Pero, nagawa ko na ang dapat kong gawin. Binigay ko. Pananagutan ko yun. Kung saan niya dadalhin yun, pananagutan niya yan. Very, very, very simple and yet very deep sense of prayer for this sister. A very strong sense of discernment. In fact, you know, she forecasted her death. Nung medyo mamamatay na siya, nagpauwi na siya sa Tagaytay kasi nandun yung libingan ng mga FMM sa Tagaytay. And she waited for her last days there. No? Peacefully. A woman that was truly blessed by the Spirit of the Lord. So, yun ang sabi ni Pope. Be a brother's keeper. Where is your brother? Yung pangatlong Bible verse. Yung unang Bible verse, pabaon ni Pope sa buong simbahan. Yung ikalawang Bible verse, pabaon niya sa atin, sa ating parokya, sa ating community. Ang pangatlong Bible verse ay kinuha po niya sa James 5, 8. Ito yung title ng letter. James 5, 8. Make your hearts firm. At sabi niya, itong Bible verse naman na ito, pabaon niya sa individual na kristyano. Ang ganda, no? May pabaon siya sa buong simbahan, may pabaon siya sa community, may pabaon siya sa bawat isa sa atin. Sabi niya, gusto niyong talagang ma-practice niyo yung spirituality ng love of love coming from the cross, love that is not indifferent, love that has room for all, especially the poor. Sabi niya sa ating individual, James 5.8, make your hearts firm. Alam niyo, nung unang tingin ko ganyan, hindi ko makuha. Hindi ko magets kung ano ang connection. No? Yung unang dalawang verse, madaling kunin ang connection. Pero dito, kailangan niya ipaliwanag. At ito ang paliwanag niya. Pa para sa bawat isa sa atin, make your hearts firm. Kasi sabi niya, as individuals, we are tempted by indifference. Bawat isa sa atin, we are tempted by indifference. But how are we tempted by indifference? Yung pagsasawalang bahala, pagsasawalang kibo sa sino mang nangangailangan kanya. We are tempted as individuals by indifference because we are flooded, flooded with news reports, troubling images of human suffering. We feel an, a complete inability to help. We feel our distress and powerlessness 
Eh, sabi niya sa gitna ng mga yun, the usual response of the person eh, bahala. Bayaan mo na. Wala lang tayo magagawa. Mag-isa lang ako. Ano na magagawa ako? Laki-laki ng problema. Eh, kung si Pinoy nga, nakukurta na eh. Ako pa. Ah? Bihan mo na lang. Baka may ibang pwede sumol. Hindi ako. Retired na ako, Father. The Pope says, make your hearts firm. Make your hearts firm. Don't just say, ako lang naman. Ito sabi niya, first kanya, do not underestimate the power of many voices. Oh, siguro ikaw lang. Siguro ikaw lang. O di dalawa na kayo. Ikaw lang. Tatlo na kayo. Do not underestimate the power of many voices. United voices. United specially kanya in prayer. So sabi niya, okay. Gawin mo kung anong pwede. Dito habang binabasa ko ito, alam nyo, what came to my mind in my meditation is the miracle of the loaves. The miracle of the loaves. One of the big miracles of Jesus. Feeding the 5,000. How did it start? Ang sabi ni Lord doon sa mga, sa mga disciple niya, you give them something to eat yourselves. Ang response ng isang alagad, accountant siya, pinilang agad. Sabi niya, Lord, 200 days wages ko lang. Yung isa naman, simple lang. Sabi niya, meron dito. Bata, may baon. Five loaves and two fish. Pero sinunda niya, sabi niya, but what good is that for so many? And the answer of the Lord was, akin na. Akin na. Five loaves, two fish, akin na. Do not underestimate the power of united voices. Small voices coming together. Sabi niya, hindi naman kailangan grand plan lahat. We can start what we can do in our diocese, sabi nga niya. What we can do in our church. But aside from that, there's another thing, very disturbing thing that the Holy Father writes in this part of his letter. Sabi niya, marami sa atin nagiging indifferent kasi sa tingin natin, mag-isa lang ako, nangihina ako. Ito sabi niya, we must be able to resist the diabolical temptation. Notice the words that he used. Huh? We must be able to resist the diabolical temptation of thinking that by my own effort, I can save the world. Don't wait for the time when you can say, I can save the world, then let's do it. As sabi ni Pope, that is diabolical. Don't ever think that way. That the time will come that you can act when you can save the world. There's only one Savior. There's only one Messiah. At sa aking pong experience, lahat ng nagpanggap na Messiah, Messiahan. Buti na lang hindi nanalo sa eleksyon. May sayad din pala. Ha? The Pope was saying, no, we are not Messiah. No. Let us never think that we will act when the time comes that we can change the world. 
when I will be in a position, Father, and I can change the world, I will act. So the Pope says, that is diabolical. Do what you can do. Let your hearts be firm. We are all workers in the vineyard of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Sabi nga ni Paul, one will plant, another will water, another one probably will reap the harvest, but the Lord will give the growth. We are not the owners of the vineyard, my friends. We are laborers in God's harvest time. We are only asked to do what we can do in our part of the harvest. The vineyard will continue beyond us. Much more than that, the Lord of the harvest will continue beyond us. Now, looking at all of these things, no? sabi ni Pope, isang bagay kung ganun ang mahalaga sa pagpasok daw natin sa Holy Week, sa Lent, no? and even Easter time. I haven't tried to see whether, oh, I'm sure it is already posted, but I have not downloaded and reflected on the Easter message of the Pope. No? But, Sabi niya, towards the end of the letter for Lent, coming, sabi niya, we realize then that the important program of Lent and Easter and Lent and Holy Week is, sabi niya, the formation of the heart. Usually, you know, pag sinabi natin formation sa renewal, Formation is uh, associated with the ano, eh, with lecture. Oh. oh, meron tayong formation series. Nako, lecture yan. No? No. Pero sabi ni Pope Francis, no, sabi niya, the formation of the heart. That is the most important. And he borrows this from Pope Benedict. No? Pope Benedict uses this term in Deus Caritas Est. No? Number 31 of Deus Caritas Est, uh, the, one of the encyclicals of Pope Benedict, the formation of the heart. And sabi ni Pope Francis, as we look at Jesus in the, on the cross during the season of Lent, let us pray, brothers and sisters, to this Jesus on the cross, and let us say, Fac cor nostrum secundum cortuum. These are Latin words, no? Fac cor nostrum secundum cortuum. Make our hearts secundum like your heart. This is part of the litany of the sacred heart, if you can recall. No? Sacred heart of Jesus, make our hearts like your heart. A heart pierced on the cross with the lance, but a heart that was never indifferent in pain. A heart that always had room for everyone. Siguro po, during this morning, we can try to settle with these thoughts. No? Ilang mga bagay siguro ang Gusto ko lang i-bring out sa inyo by way of a help, no? I'd like to leave some questions for your own ponderings, no? Uh, number one, we heard the Pope tell us, Lent is always a time of renewal. Renewal in grace. Yeah? Siguro yun po ang unang magandang i-meditate natin. No? What specific grace what particular grace do I need from God at this moment? 
of my life. If Lent is a time of renewal in grace, what specific grace do I need from God at this moment? Secondly, the, the Pope was talking about the globalization of indifference as a part of the problem of poverty. Siguro magandang I ask the question also. What experiences, what experiences, what forms of indifference do I experience around me? Sa mundong kinagagalawan ko, sa opisina, sa pamilya, sa aming subdivision, sa aming munting pamayanan. What experiences, realities of indifference do I experience? Do I see? Am I aware of? No? And what can I do? What am I being called to do in the face of these realities? Ano ang personal message ni Lord sa akin in the face of these realities? And the last point I would like to take from the concluding part of the message of the Pope. Sabi niya, let us pray that our hearts be like the heart of Jesus. No? The third and the last reflection question that I'd like to pause is this. What mark of the heart of Jesus, what particular mark Anong katangian ng puso ni Jesus? What mark of the heart of Jesus would I also need to imbibe in my own heart? What particular mark, what particular character of the heart of Jesus do I need to imbibe in my own heart? And just like us to have a moment of prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Loving Father, the God of all seasons, the God who made all seasons, Thank you for life and thank you for moments of renewal. As we gather and we pray and we enter together in this week of renewal in the grace of the cross of Jesus. Loving Father, we ask you to send us the powerful anointing of your Spirit. Loving Father, may your Holy Spirit lead us deeper into the heart of Jesus. Let us not just see the story of Jesus during this Holy Week. Let us not just recall, Father, the passion, the external pain, the wounds of Jesus. Like St. Paul, let us live in the heart of Jesus. Let us feel the passion of Jesus from within the passion that led him into his cross, what was in his heart, what was in his thoughts. 
And Father, as you lead us ever deeply into the heart of your Son, with the power of your Spirit, let us grow more and more in the image of your Son. We have been baptized in the death and the rising of Jesus. Let us be able to live that gift of baptism by really coming closer, closer to the way of Jesus, closer to the life of Jesus, closer to the truth of Jesus.